welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Sawdust Nation podcast. And in fact, it's the 112th episode. It's crazy. Time has flown. 12 episodes since episode 100 back in Texas. And here I am in North Dakota announcing for, well, yeah, it's been a while. Holy crap. But in this uh, little conversation, we got Matt from Voltner Woodworking, one of our special guests that we have. And he's graced us with his presence yet again. And Josh over there at North Country Woodworking. And old Nick and Bourbon Collection from MPG Creations. Holy crap, That's that collection seems to have grown. And a weird flag in the background for our Patreons in the uncut version. Um, so yeah, we got a lot going on. A lot's been going on, not only in the shops, but maybe even in the community. So I'm going to go on and kick it on over to uh, Matt. What's going on in your shop, dude? Well, uh, I am taking the rest of the week off. I work today. I'm taking the rest of the week off because I've got a big uh, built-in project going in on Saturday, and it does not have paint yet. <laughs> hmm. So I'll be taking the next couple days to lay down some, some paint on that. It's four cabinets. It's like 14 doors. Um, so I've got that going on, and then I've got a epoxy project that, I think people will be very excited about once they see it. Um, so it's a big deep pour epoxy project. So hopefully I can get to that. Uh, so it'll have time to cure. It's going to take probably, I don't know, four days to cure my first big deep pour. So that'll be fun. Are you doing it in segments? Are you pouring it all? How are you doing that? Uh, I got the Moss deep pour. So um, it can go up to two inches, I think, but I'm only... So when I say deep pour, this is only going to be a half inch, uh, but it's it's a long like area. Um, We're so used it's, to it's, that. Yeah, <laughs> deep and wide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'll be laying that down and uh, trying to get the shop looking like really nice. Basically, I want to change it from calling it a shop to a studio. Ooh. Yeah, no, you're making a lot of yeah. flack, you know, lately. You know, people are like, oh, not a speck of sawdust. It's like, well, you know. Right, yeah. You know, you didn't see it like an hour ago when it was destroyed. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's funny is people, they, yeah, they'll make comments like that, but they don't even, they just make a comment in passing. They've never seen your shop. They don't follow you there. It's, uh, that's funny. But I need to do a YouTube video because I, I did a, um, I did a shop tour, I don't know, gosh, maybe it's like six months ago, eight months ago or something like that with my messy shop. And so it's it's going to look totally different. Uh, I'm going to do an updated shop tour um, here in about a month or so. So that's what I got going on. Oh, no. Josh, what do you have? Well, um, I just got a couple orders in. I got two uh, more two-foot mallets I'll be doing. or Excuse me, hammers. <clears throat> hammers. You're not allowed to call them mallets? Well, <laughs> uh, we know what. The difference between mallet and a hammer is, but the the squadron I do it for, I said mallet once. They're like, no, we don't want mallets. We want hammers. So, oh, I didn't know if there was like some, yeah, some sort of like so, distinction that there was. No, nah. like, we couldn't say that or something. I don't know. Yeah, you can't say river tail. <laughs> Trademark hammer. Anyway, uh, doing a couple of those. Uh, the squadron hit me up with a, uh, they ordered a going away present and the wood portion of it. They didn't like, so they came to me and they're like, Hey, can you make this better? And I'm like, sure. So I came up with some ideas that are going to be kind of unique with that. And I uh, can't wait to get working on that. I have another going away gift I'll be working on. And well, I got to laser engrave a vehicle this uh, last weekend. What? Um, if you see my latest reel. Um, so the gas cap cover. The, the, the piece of the vehicle that folds open side to side, up and down, whatever. They took that off and they wanted an engraving on there. And I told them straight up, I'm like, sure, <laughs> why not? <laughs> um, so I got a level in the machine. Uh, I got everything set up and I'm like, we're going to take off a little bit at a time until we get where we need it. I use like four, uh, 400 for my speed and like 25 for the power. And it went right down to the middle. First pass. So we called it good and uh, we took it off. I cleaned it up and they loved it. We installed it right then and there. They helped me make a little reel. My uh, little boy helped me with it. He was there. He, he got to uh, witness the whole thing. The client got to push start. They were pretty excited about that. 
it was cool because it was a fellow co-worker approached me about it. His father drove from Wisconsin to come visit or Minnesota. Ooh, it's one of those. Yeah. So long story short, I got to laser engrave that and uh, the client got to push the play button, if you will. I didn't get, I guess I didn't read it because I didn't know that was laser engraved. I thought it was like uh, vinyl or like painted. So I'm going to go back and look at that. Nope. That's, that's straight up uh, lasered uh, right down to the metal. Uh, they're going to put a clear coat over it. So obviously it doesn't rust. Um, and uh, yeah, I didn't take any pictures of it being lasered because I had um, clients in the shop. I had my son in the shop and like, I didn't want to, um, where did nap go? It's nap time. By the way, uh, Josh, um, I think I think Nat needs to take note on what Matt just said. So anytime he comes on Instagram, he's like, all right, folks, it's nap time. So that could be his tagline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he needs to he needs to have a tagline. Anyway, long story short, it was a cool experience. It was something that I don't know many people have done um, and I got to tackle it. And it was just one of those things where. Uh, so were you nervous? Were you nervous that it wasn't? Oh, gonna, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Did you already like research? What is a replacement cost? <laughs> well, I kind of was put at ease because the dad's. I'm like, look, we're gonna take a little bit of time. He goes, look, there's nothing you could do to this that Amazon can't fix. And I'm like, push play. Yeah, that's a great client <laughs> so right there. We went for it. I had somebody ask about gun stocks, and I was like, mm, not my gig. Like, I don't, I don't want to do gun stocks. That's for somebody else because I don't want to replace it when it screws up. As far as gun stocks go, what I usually do is I do do very light passes until <laughs> I get the, the darkness do and do. the death I need. Going along that line, that's what my plan for this latest project was. But I didn't expect for the settings I was using to actually engrave as quickly. Because, you know, 400 at like 20%, it's not that much. Um, did you have a nap so i'll just say children <laughs> okay. but yeah it, w- it was fun um i was very uh happy to be able to do that for them you know they have a lasting memory um primarily is for his son in the air force and had the kc10 underneath it in which he's currently flying and soon will be flying the new kc46 um so you know uh, it was it was nice to see they brought their dog um i forget what kind of dog it was but one with the drools everywhere and like when it drinks half the water falls out and of course my son's like give me a kiss (laughs) so we had a great time with that um i finally got to hang up the kids uh stuff in the room olaf and pikachu they love, love that um I'm doing a sign for the outside of the shop to kind of hang up that way. When people go by, I don't have to worry about having the shop door open. My truck turned around so they can see the sign. They could just see the sign and be like, oh, okay, this is it. Um, it's not too big. Um, it's going to be like 13 by 13. And it's going to go kind of where the peak is in the front. And uh, yeah, it's it's just there to kind of show that I'm a legit business. Um, I'm using a <laughs> uh, background of Walmart. I noticed that dig. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like that's a hint at something from like two episodes ago. Yeah, I'm still not over that. I'm still kind of yeah. Those who know know, but it's one of those things. Like, um, I haven't had a lot of orders this month, and because of that, I, I've been able to do multiple th- things in the shop. I've never really got to do. Like, I've been wanting to do this sign for a very long time, but I've never really experimented. There you go, with the CNC and laser as far as inlays go. So I had to figure out that calculation. And actually, before we started recording, I was talking to Nick about it because he has the same programs as I. Um, and that worked really well. I kind of I contacted Nick and Nap just to kind of see what their take is because I know they've done similar things. And uh, got that worked out perfectly. I'm in the finishing stages of that. I did uh, little L brackets and holders for my uh, honeycomb. That was an idea that... Uh, Actually, Nap came up with on a telephone phone call we had, and uh, I ran with it. I did wood. I mean, it had some extra cherry laying around, and uh, I wasn't really going to do anything with it. It was probably going to end up in the burn pile, so I just I put some rare earth magnets in there, used the UV clear from Total Boat, and uh, glued that in there. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, it works great. I had it basically standing up and down because I had a honeycomb out when I was doing my uh, rotary. It was holding the piece in place. And that's that's more than enough I need for that. And then uh, this weekend, I also invited three or four people in the local area to come over to get free rotaries done on a uh, cup engravings done on the laser to kind of so I get practice with different cups. Um, I kind of get to 
you know, my name out there for being able to do it. I got a couple people to show up, got their cups engraved for free, and they loved them, and everything worked well. And thanks for Nick and Nap. Uh, they helped me definitely with that. And uh, I don't know. It just everything's going fairly well in the shop. I can't complain. Yeah, I'm getting things done that I never really had time for. So it's it's a new feeling for me. <laughs> yeah, I like the the hold downs. I think it was a it was a guy from a glimpse inside. He had hold downs on his, um, and then he set it up for like little corner pieces for like repeating uh, mm-hmm. repeating things. I'm like, man, I think you guys should turn the name of the podcast into like Laser Masters podcast we could definitely do another podcast you guys want to do two recordings a I, week i mean it's you know um <laughs> sawdust nation the monday edition by the way and then we can do the laser edition and then the vetric edition and then you know who knows oh cnc edition uh but yeah i did a 12 inch a six inch and then a couple two inches because you know we know that two inches fairly well and uh the three of those and uh <laughs> What's wrong with that? I, I like, okay, since you said I looked at you, I looked at Nick, and then looked at Matt, and Matt was like. <laughs> like, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> if you're not watching if you know, the stream, you know. people, um, you're missing out. But, uh, yeah, it's just, it's it's nice. Yeah, I didn't make a lot of money this month. <laughs> but you know what? I was lucky enough to sell the Glowforge, so it's gone in new hands. New makers are utilizing it, and uh, that help kind of levy the blow as far as like not being busy this month but um i can't complain um i walk in the shop and i'm like you know get knocking all these little tasks out and getting some small projects here and there and getting those knocked out so yeah that's what's going on in my shop and i'm um, gonna go ahead and toss it over to nap so it went from zero to 100 here pretty quick um so obviously when i first got here not a whole lot going on because well i didn't even have a shop Shops up and running like full tilt. Um, I can tell you right now, my Amazon cart has probably full, been full at least two or three times in the past few weeks of just stuff I'm putting in the shop uh, to improve it, to make it better, make the flow better uh, than what it was before. Josh, you saw two of those items in my story the other day uh, when I said just sitting here chill- hanging out or whatever. Uh, I was literally sitting in a shop chair that I bought from Amazon and had a um, one of those laptop tables, you know, ones on wheels. I like things on wheels because it's easy to move. I don't got to pick it up and make it awkward moving around the shop. Yeah, exactly. I was literally rolling around my shop like a, like a child because it was so nice to just sit in a rolly chair and roll from station to station without having to like get up and do anything crazy. But that was also me being lazy. So getting into that portion. So I was lasering in that story. I was in the middle of my 426 12-ounce stemless wine glass laser engraving job, which is got pushed out to uh, October 29th uh, due to some scheduling conflicts with the um, the event that I'm doing them for. And uh, I was like, well, that's a lot of time. But I had, was talking to Nick about it, and, you know, he made a good point, and I tend to agree with these things. Just knock it out, get it out of the way. So that's what I'm doing. But in the midst of knocking it out, hang on, I had to get the old spittoon there. Um, in the midst of knocking it out, I noticed my laser wasn't quite acting right. Um, I did a whole entire box of glasses. It was etching them. It was etching them decently, but they weren't as frosty. And you guys know what I'm talking about. Like when you see laser etched glass, it's typically a frosty white when it's a good etching. And um, it just wasn't, it wasn't doing it. I was like, what is going on? So I was getting kind of, getting kind of, to be honest with you. But so I ended up recalibrating my laser. So uh, something Matt and I were doing a little while back when I was helping him dial his laser in. Uh, I noticed that for some reason, mine just still wasn't acting right. So I just went through a full realignment, full uh, testing and all these things. And wouldn't you know it, it was definitely out of line somewhere. I don't know when the mirror got hit or what happened, but something got knocked out to where the beam was not hitting uh, where it needed to. But then also the fact... What he's not telling you people is that he jinxed my machine too. Yeah, I jinxed his machine. And then (laughs) I guess karma, I guess. I don't know. I didn't mean to jinx his machine, but it happened. Hopefully your machine's working all right, Matt. No, you, you helped me out. I appreciate it. Uh, not a problem. But yeah, so that was going on. So I have not touched. And you didn't charge me for it, which was great. No, because that's what community. You know, some people charge by the some people charge by the hour. Well, that, uh, was, that, that was the net thirty account you were going through. So don't worry, it's in the mail. The checks, the, the bills yeah, the in checks, the mail. Yeah, invoice is totally in the mail. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, you know, that's what a community is for, right? Because we help each other out. That's how we make it stronger. But yeah, so we did that. The laser has not been moved, though, as far as that job is concerned. So right now, the rotary, my Rotoboss rotary, is sitting in the bed of the machine still, ready with the laser head on the spot where the glasses are at. So as soon as I kicked that guy on, I actually disabled the homing in Lightburn. So it doesn't rehome. It's just there. Uh, and all I got to do is turn it on, load the file, and hit start. And I can continuously go through that. So I'm going to leave that in there until I'm done. So tonight after the podcast, I'll probably go run through about 100 glasses. Uh, that'll take, uh, it's like four minutes a piece. So I can sit there and do that and work on the uh, other project I got going on, which is that shadow box. So I did a part one and a part two. Uh, part one was a little taste of what I was doing. Part two was the actual facade. Uh, it was an 18 and a half hour carve that I did uh, between Saturday and Sunday morning. And it was on my one finity with my awesome 1.5 uh, kilowatt water cooled spindle from PWN CNC, uh, as well as um, the help, a lot of help from old Beach Time Woodworks uh, Woodworking over Ben Warren. He, uh, he was my lifeline this weekend. I can tell you right now, I had a couple freak out meltdown moments. Ben had to talk me off the ledge because there was a couple times where, man, I was like, this isn't right. Something's going to happen. My machine's going to crash. It's going to screw this uh, job up. And typically, I'm not like normally nervous about that stuff, but I only had one chance to do this. I only had enough uh, five quarter to do this job once. Yeah, that was a big car. Yeah. That made me nervous. 18 hours. Yeah. It, yeah. Seven hour roughing pass. So that was the part I was the most so nervous. did you watch it for about 17 of the 18 hours? <laughs> yeah, to, pretty much. I mean, I actually ended up setting up one of my cameras in my garage to make sure I could check on it. Because Ben also gave me the good uh, hint of, yeah, you know, you just set your camera up, put it on there, go sit in the recliner, have a beer, watch watch the, the show, right. and every 15 minutes, go look at it. So you can imagine. 18 hours later, you're hammered. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's funny. It's like we, we buy these robots and then we, we're like, oh, it can work while we go do something else. And then we stand over the machine and watch the robot. Like like a hawk I, I do have to ask though you said seven hour roughing pass what bit were you using for the roughing pass and were you doing the max depth that that bit's capable and speed so i was using in this case because I, i've actually switched over to a specific brand of cnc bits which i'll talk about here shortly um but the one i had to use because he doesn't make this particular one yet was a cmt orange um half inch ball nose or not ball nose but a cove bit not cove bit. what the hell is it called a bowl bit. There we go. And um, that was also by the recommendation of Ben, because imagine doing a quarter inch ball mill, uh, roughing that. That would have been almost double the time. Uh, so I used ben to says have... he's going to start charging you if you keep giving away his secrets. Oh, we're not even close to giving away the secrets. And you know that. Um, <laughs> but um, so I ran that and Ben did give me some specific parameters based off of his machine. Um, but which he admits was even a little conservative. Now, mind you, being this being the first large 3D project I did, you know what? I'm going to err on the side of caution here. I'm going to stick with what Ben's telling me to do. I'm not going to push the machine. Um, but I was running uh, just under an eighth of an inch, so 0.083 at 40% step over. And I was running it at, I think, I think it was at 65 inches per minute with a 55 inches per minute uh, plunge, which is at relatively conservative. I could have run it faster hindsight 2020 looking at it but i'm glad i didn't because again one shot to do this and had that machine like hit something wrong you know crashed into something taking a chunk out of the wood that would have been all she wrote and i've had to start all over and honestly i probably wouldn't even be on the podcast today i probably i'm like halfway to bismarck already to go pick up some more wood because uh half of that, that five quarter oak is not easy to come by in my parts here in my is head. it white or red oak red oak I definitely probably would have chose a different lumber for that. that well, is- so funny thing on that. So this is where like that whole business and thing, a business end comes in. When you look at um, my bottom line with what I charged, and I won't say what I charged on here. Um, they showed me a picture. I gave them exactly what they're looking for as far as what it is they wanted me to do. And actually better, I might add, because the facade is... I'll just say night and day difference from what they showed me they wanted. Um, but they gave me a vision and that's what I produced. Now the hard part is done. And all I have to do now is the easy part, uh, which is build the box behind it, get the foam, um, the cork board, which I'm looking into sheets of cork foam. 
a quarter inch so I don't have to buy a cork board and rip it apart because uh, it'll be a lot easier that way. I think for this one, though, I will just get the cork board from uh, Old Wally World uh, because Nick and I found a, a cheat code. Uh, there's these cork boards at Walmart that are like 12 bucks, and, well, that's still cheaper than a regular cork panel. So I'm going to go ahead and go grab that just for this one, and it works just as good. So that's that project. More to come on that. I'm going to post plenty of reels. Part three, coming to you soon. Um, so that's that job. Uh, I got hit up for Can you post the 18-hour uh, reel? Of time lapse. Of the car. I want to see the time yeah. lapse. So I do have small videos of it. Um, the last reel, I think, captured it. But what I might do is I might do an actual video of just parts. Like it was like two and a half minute parts, three minute parts of when I was recording it. Because I'll tell you right now, every time I went back out and looked at that job, just watching the red, well, my red oak is really hard to carve because it likes to splinter on you. And again, that's why. That's why I said that. By the way. So, and, and to your, to your point on that, Ben even said the same thing, but he did say, if you go with the grain, shouldn't have any issues. And exactly what I did. I went with the grain on the cut. And honestly, the, the chips were good. They were nice fluffy chips. It wasn't sawdust. It wasn't stringy long chunks. Uh, so then I'll finish that guy up. It'll be out the door. I'm trying to get it out the door next Monday. The guy's retirement is one September. So we get out the door Monday, it gets to them. Hopefully by the end of the week, they fill it and they present it, which I'm really excited for them to present this just because one first long 3D carve and really first successful 3D carve I've done. And it's um it's beautiful. I honestly like I'm addicted. It's sitting over here right now because it's it's on the old display area that my wife made. She got me like a whole like little studio thing over here. And you know, I'm just gonna shoot. So it can just roll roll that paper down and I can go ahead and you know do a little backdrop deal. So I can get different colored papers and stuff if I choose to. But black is the best, I think, to have on there. <sighs> what else? Okay, so next job gets into epoxy. Haven't touched epoxy epoxy since uh Texas. And I'm going to be doing just a quick emblem um for some military training structures down there in San Antonio. Nick, uh they they Passed it to Nick first. And Nick's like, I got too much going on right now, man. <laughs> so they ended up reaching out to me. And I was like, yeah, I can do that. You know, I'll just, yeah, I'll give it to you on this date. And, you know, that'll be, that'll be that. What else we got? I have a huge order for heritage boards. So they're going to be cherry uh, 24 by 18 boards with laser plaques attached, laserable plaques attached with some logos. It's pretty much just to capture and commemorate like the previous chiefs, commanders, and like um, award winners for certain things. And it'll go on there and it'll be for like 32 years of, of heritage for their squadron, which would be cool. As well as 16 uh, hallway door signs for their dormitories. So those will be pretty cool to do as well. Uh, more to come on that. I haven't started on that because there's no real timeline for that. But I'm going to start that probably next week when I send that shadow box out. And let's see. Is there anything else I'm doing? Well, I keep looking around because uh, my office is just about done. Wifey, uh, my number one employee. And employee of the month, she's been hooking it up and setting up my office for me. Uh, she's getting a, a storage unit for this corner over here. It's a little bare. That's where all my um, eye candy pigments are going to go. And any other like epoxy, uh, we'll say materials like syringes, needles, all those things. It's for storage just to keep a cleaner office. So that way when I do go to do the stuff, I can just go, oh, hey, pull this out of the drawer, do my thing, put it all back. And I will be using uh, the old total boat epoxy for that job, by the way, which I haven't used anything else since, to be honest with you. Ever since Nick got me onto a total boat, it's just been my go-to. Uh, there's a lot of other good stuff out there, but right now I'm not in the um, the phase for experimenting with other epoxy, just because if I know how to use it, that's what I'm going to go to for now. Uh, see, I think that's really it as far as projects are concerned. Uh, shop status. So yes, it is up and running, but it's not complete. I did get that coupler uh, from Rockler. Uh, one of the episodes we were talking about it. So this will end up going on my dust collection so I can interface it with the four inch splitter to go to my table saw and then up and out for a uh, drop for my other machines. Because when it does hit winter here, I need to keep dust as low as possible, especially with the heater that's now hanging in my garage, which I haven't fully hooked up yet, but it is hanging from the ceiling. Uh, it, it's a big one. If you saw the, the story about, you know, was it that reel I put up? It was like, how much did it cost you? You know, type deal. The wife really didn't care how much it cost, but I will tell you, it's it's a big heater, a little bit bigger than I thought, to be honest with you. But it had a place. I harnessed my inner neck and said, "Oh, there's plenty of space right here," so I put it right there. Um, I did sell something though in my shop. 
and it hurts my heart. My boss bought my first CNC machine. Mm. And did you have a little like ceremony? The ceremony is still to come. Uh, the agreement we worked out because it is in pieces right now. You know, I, I took it apart, put it in you know, hardware and bags, and I don't expect him to put this together. He's never put a Shapoko together. And I love the Shapoko. It did awesome stuff for me. But then I moved on to Onefinity just because I need something a little more robust uh, for what I was doing. And I'm going to put that machine together. He's going to come by and help put it together so he understands, like, this is what goes into this. Uh, these are parts you'll need to replace, those things. But it will get put together in my shop. And, yes, I will do a, uh, a send-off the proper way uh, as it leaves my shop. So, At least with a CNC, you don't have to do the, the – alignment like you do on a laser with the stupid paper yeah there is that i think the only thing that might which i'll show him how to do this at his own shop but uh is just getting the machine square and showing him like hey this is how you like get your pieces square on the work piece i typically take a v-bit and i think nick even told me this one took a v-bit and draw a square so whatever is square to the machine that's how you're going to want to set up your your squaring um devices if you will uh, I mean, I use my PW and CNC square, uh, CNC square system, which is pretty good. Uh, so that's going to leave the dust collection system will get built probably in another weekend or two. Drywall's got to go up very soon because winter is coming here. And yeah, just all sorts of things coming into the shop for whether it be jobs or shop progress. So that's really all, got, all I got going in the shop. I got a little bit more stuff to go into, but that'll be a little bit later. Kicking it on over to you. Not really. Uh, cause you already did your stuff, but oh, you're such a tease. Yeah. But Josh, <laughs> you already went. It's like, tell I'm, us again. It's like, I'm new here. Um, but Nick, bro, what's going on in your shop? Oh, it's, it's everyday antics. Um, so I broke down and ordered a surf prep sander. So yeah, I know. Right. I got the three by four. Um, it's like the sponge sander. So it's got a whole bunch of different attachments and stuff that come with it, different different papers and different different abrasives that come with it. I'm super excited about it. It should be here sometime this week. Um, and I ordered through uh, Matt Voltner. Actually, I used his um, was it your promo code or your your affiliate code? Was it? Yes, sir. Thank is, you. is that for and that's for everybody though, right? Yeah, ten percent. What what is it again? Voltner Woodworking 10. So it saved me like $65 off the purchase, which every little bit helps. Um, so thanks to Matt. Um, I was like, well, you know, nothing against Merca at all. And I still have my Merca sander. And I still have a Festool sander, but the whole um, family business kind of thing kind of swayed me on that. And uh, that's why I went with, with Surf Prep. Well, every sander has its place in the shop, though. I mean, think about it. every sander well, yeah. has a specific thing you use it for. So, I mean, yeah, that's, that that is true. But I mean, uh, I could have gone with the Merca three by four as well. There was really no, I don't know. I wanted to give Surf Prep a shout out because I've been seeing a lot of their stuff on the on Instagram. I've been hearing a lot of good things about them, and Matt vouched for them, and he's an affiliate. And I was like, you know what? Why not help support support another maker? Um, and, uh, anyway, that being said, yeah, good family for sure. The podium I built that I told you I shipped out, it was delivered today and, uh, you wouldn't believe what the shipper did to it. No, no, I'm, I'm just playing. They, they, oh it was delivered. <laughs> it was delivered without a scratch. And so the guy who actually picked it up, who was the, the truck driver was, Formerly a woodworker owned a furniture business and he built furniture. So he completely understood the whole, you know, like this needs to be handled with care. And uh, the customer absolutely loved it. And they're, I, I, I got pictures of it. Like I love when I get pictures with my customers, you know, or from my customers and they absolutely love stuff. Cause that feels so good to know that, you know, something that I built is bringing people so much joy. I got to say, Total Boat Wood Honey, and not because not because we're sponsored by Total Boat, because I really love this product. I, I gave it a shot, and oh my goodness, it's food safe, and it it just made the grain pop. So I 
I'm I'm now a believer. So what I did was he's a believer. I had set up I had an appointment with the uh, the folks at Garrison Brothers Distillery because um, we were going to discuss uh, potentially doing a job for them. But before I went up there, because they're in high Texas, so it's about an hour and a half from where I'm at. Uh, before I went up there, I made a, made a few gifts for them, some coasters and a cutting board. And I, and I laser etched their logo on there with my, my laser. And uh, they absolutely loved it. And I used the Total Boat Wood Honey on the, that pro- those products. And so they were like, oh, can we, you know, is it food safe? I'm like, absolutely. So go ahead and do what you got to do. Eat off it if you want. It could be a charcuterie board or a cutting board or whatever. So... But uh, did did have success up there, and uh, got, they placed a, a good order with me, and um, I'm in the process of sourcing some Texas mesquite from Donald Starnes down there in Panamaria, Texas, and uh, yeah, it's it's this could be good for a lot of people. So I'm I'm actually looking at getting some help from my brother on making some of this stuff. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good time, and then. Uh, Last minute orders. I got to tell you what, folks. Last minute orders are great for making money. However, when the <laughs> customer comes to you and gives you a last minute order and not all their ducks are in a row or like maybe there's a, uh, a communication disconnect on design or, or something like that, that's when it becomes a pain. Um, I've had a couple last minute orders where there was a disconnect um, between me and the customer and uh I ended up fixing those issues free of charge just because I realized, you know, I already, I already charged them a late or a rush fee for these items. So, um, and I, plus I want their future business too. So it was their first order through me. Sometimes I realize, you know, it's a business and you gotta, you gotta charge what your time and, and all that stuff and your materials and all that. But, uh, sometimes it's just better to eat that cost for the sake of a business relationship that could potentially blossom into something large. So I, at least that's how I feel. And then, uh, and you just hope that they don't turn into a PITA <laughs> customer later. A, P, a what customer? <laughs> pay, okay. For the patrons. Pay the ass. Remember my PETA, oh. my PETA charge. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's <laughs> another thing. I, I do have, I do have a, like a black list of customers that, that I don't, take business from anymore. I don't know if you guys have the same thing, but I definitely like, like there's so many people that cross my, cross my path. I do yeah. now, but there's so many people that cross my path that it's just like, I always have to make sure I have a list of people that I, I refuse to do business with now. And that's nothing against them. It's just that I, it's for me, for my sanity. Cause I can't, uh, I can't work like that. <laughs> I work a day job, you know, I don't need another boss coming to me every half hour asking me what the status is so i usually know that it's good they're going to be a PETA customer when they're like hey i have a small job i'm like <laughs> no it's not it's your small your small job is going to cost me a, a big pain in the butt yeah now so like on to next point on that whole like not you know eating the cost that's that shadow box for me right now i didn't charge nearly enough for that thing but i'll tell you what they're gonna love this thing and they're already saying they're gonna do future business based on the progress photos i've sent them so it's worth it. Especially new products like that. That's another thing, though, that you kind of have to be weary about is when customers, especially brand new customers, are like, come on, man, give me a great deal. I'll get you so much business. It's like, mm, I don't know you. And I, red flag. yeah, red flag, because I, I had a customer once get like asked for a quote and I told them they wanted two plaques. So I gave them the price for two plaques. Um, and then they're like, can you do this much? And I was like, well, I mean, how this works, it's not really how it works, but they're like, we'll order, uh, another plaque in a week or so. Um, you know, if we can get it, get the the items at this price. And it's, so if I'm doing three for that, that reduced price, then it kind of, kind of works out. So I, I agreed to it. And this is when I was pretty stupid so they they got the two plaques and then they never ordered the third one like they were supposed to and i was like i messaged them and then i just got ghosted so i was like oh, okay i got you blacklist <laughs> like, so when you talk about the red flag typically that's the first red flag but the fact that this customer said dude 
Like, I get it. If you have to increase the price on this, I totally understand. Like, I'm not going to pay it until you give me a final invoice. And honestly, just based on that alone, I'm just like, this person understands my time is worth something. Because yeah. he's like, you're even going out of your way to do these things the way we want them to be done and going far beyond expectation. Uh, so, like, you know, I'm not going to increase the price on them. I'm going to eat more of the shipping costs because the box I'm going to use to ship that is going to be a Uline padded box. Uh, you know, nice, you know, specific, the corner protectors and all this stuff. I'll eat a little bit of that cost just because the, they're that kind or of customer. discount comes off the third one. Yeah. 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 I'll take the discount off the third one. Yeah. And when, when I ship the third one, you know, it's, it's going to be like half the absolutely, cost. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what I was trying to go with there is like, has someone ever approaches me and there's been squadrons that do the same thing. We like to order so many, how much that would cost. We like to order these two now and these later. I'd be like, look, you could pay for all four right now and I'll give you the discount or you could pay full price and I'll discount the next ones. That way it ensures that you get your money worth. So uh, speaking to PETA customers, let's talk about for a second, just just dabble on PETA makers. Um, I'm going to keep it pretty light, but I spent this week basically, I, I don't know how you want to say it, uh, reminding people that they're, I don't know, they're not perfect. Let's put it that way. So... I guess the the rule of thumb is people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. So um, I I know I didn't have to do that, but I felt obligated to just because of the of the former relationship I had with this individual. But anyway, that's all I got. Uh, just talk about a PETA customer I had. So, well, I haven't done the job yet. Oh, <laughs> and Lord. I'm pretty sure they don't listen to the podcast. <laughs> but they asked me initially. Hey, how much for one of those signs? And it was one of the HDU signs um, that I I posted just recently. And it's nice, by the way. I gave him a price. Yeah, what's that? It was, it was pretty nice, by the way. Never did a good job. Oh, thank you. So uh, yeah, I did I did that sign, and and I had somebody reach out. Hey, how much for that kind of sign or whatever? Okay, well I've got a client that I want to do a job for, and you know I think they'd be interested. So I gave him the quote. Then like three weeks later, maybe a month later. So just like last week, they said, uh, Hey, here's the, the final design of, of the sign that we want to do. We want to do raised, uh, letter, like projected letters mm-hmm. off the wall. We want you to, to provide the template. We want to do like in it, it went from a scope of, Hey, I can run this on, on the CNC. It's going to be about an hour run, maybe, you know, hour of sanding and then, you know, hour or two of, of finishing kind of thing to like this 60 inch, 70 inch sign for a business uh, with projected letters and all this kind of stuff. So I was like, okay, well, that's going to be quite a bit more just so you know. Now, material wise, it wasn't going to take much more material. In fact, it might actually take less material because I can nest everything together. But the time that I would have to put into it, you know, making, making sure that the holes lined up. And then I was going to do a vinyl template and everything so they could apply the vinyl to the wall. Then they can install the sign and all that kind of stuff. So the, the cost that I gave them initially to the cost that I gave them for, for that final one was triple the cost. Oh man, why, why so much? That's crazy. And I was like, well, it's all hours. It's all labor. And so, um, I gave him a price and like, okay, well, let me come back to the client. So they came back a couple days later and like, would you do it for, and they, they gave me a number and it was $200 less. Of the original? And I'm like, of, no, of, of the, oh, the of final. Okay. Quote. Yeah. And I was like, uh, well, I mean, you do realize I said, if, if you told this price and actually referred to, um, I referred to, to somebody that I now don't get along with. I said, um, you know, if you want to reach out to this to this person, this person does HDU signs all the time. Uh, but you should know that their cost is probably going to be double what my cost is because it's their full time job and everything. And I just know that this person's been very vocal about, uh, you know, their costs and about how people like me who have a full time job don't charge enough. But to me, that job was going to be worth it at price X. Then they wanted to discount it even more. I said, feel free to reach out to this person. And then I, I gave him um, another person 
uh, who does signs like that's part of their name, right? Um, on Instagram. So I gave them some referrals and I said, Hey, feel free to reach out to them and, um, and, you know, come back to me. And I said, no hard feelings. If I lose the job, it's, it's, you know, this is not my bread and butter. Um, but this is what it's worth to me. So anyways, I gave it some time and I came back and, um, I told them, look, I can do it for the cheaper cost, but I'm not going to do project. I I can't do projected letters. It's going to just take too much, you know, time and effort. That was Friday and I haven't heard back from him yet. So we'll see. You know, one thing I don't ever, one thing that doesn't get old with that whole thing is people think we're made of time. Like they forget that. Yeah, we're a business. Okay, sure. And, you know, myself, you and, you know, we have full time jobs and we do this stuff. Is a, we'll but are you a legitimate business? Uh, I don't know. I might be. I'm not sure. Josh, are you, are you legitimate? I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not. Actually, I'm a scam artist. You guys are all been scammed for the last three, four years. Yeah, totally. Um, but they, they just see. They just forget. Like some of us have families. We still have that time that we're taking away from them. Um, we're coming home after a long day, typically ten to twelve, depending on how many you know what you do hours of work. Uh, All different kinds of work, mental exhaustive type work tends to put a dampener on the shop time because, well, now you're thinking like, oh, I got to go in the shop. I got to do this. I got to do that. Now, typically, that's a place of Zen for most makers. And it really is most of the time. But sometimes you're just like, dude, I'm freaking beat. And I know Nick knows this because he that that dude, man, he's been putting out so much damn work and he's been doing his full time Air Force job. He's like he called me. He's like, nap. I'm I'm freaking smoked, dude. I'm going to bed like I'm tired, boss. I'm real tired. I'm real tired. tired. (laughs) And, you know, that's what people forget. So when we give them our prices and they're like, that's kind of high, you're like, yeah, well, my time is, it's worth something to me. So it should be worth to whomever is contracting me or asking me to do stuff. Well, that's what bugs me about the, hey, I have a small job. Well, guess what? Your small job is taking away from time that I can make a big job with bigger margin. Mm -hmm. And I have a limited amount of time on the weekends to do what I need to do. You know, like you guys, I work a full time job and then I hit the shop on the weekend. I I would argue that I put a lot more time on my feet than someone who does it full time. That's not to disrespect people who do it full time. I mean, it that is my goal at some point. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, those people work 60 hours as well, you know, because they're trying to feed their family. Some people don't have to, you know, some people it's their full-time gig, but they're sitting on a boatload of money. I mean, it, and it can be like that. You know, some people are, I guess, fortunate enough to inherit big sums of money, whether they're through any means, you know, it doesn't matter. You got money, you got money. You know, what do they call the, I got F you money, I think is what it is. I think is what the phrase <laughs> yeah. is, you know, some people have that. Some people don't, you know, that's why we're doing this yeah. and also doing the side hustle, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't be out in the uh, shop in a hundred degree weather if I, you know, <laughs> like I would take the summer off. Right. But I'm trying to, I'm trying to make sure that my kids can play sports and you know, other things. You don't have air conditioning in your garage? No. This dude's got a sweat so rag. I have, I have a, He's got a sweat rag, a, bro. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that live was, was pretty awful. Uh, <laughs> I have a portable AC unit, but it does not cool the shop down fast enough. Yeah. yeah. It just, it's just, I'm constantly running and I don't even feel have it. you thought about putting a split in your garage I've been researching it and mm. I just don't have the extra two thousand bucks that it's gonna take so what you do is you go find somebody who does have one and while they're on vacation <laughs> not playing <laughs> <laughs> we'll just say nice. this particular person helped me with my heater situation and they might be able to help yeah. you out too Makers helping that's makers. Right. And yeah, that's right. That, that's kind of. I'll have a new phrase for you guys by the end of the night. And, I, and I'm excited to hear it because I'm ready to switch gears a little bit because I do want to talk about something. And uh, Matt, I think this will lead kind of what into maybe what's got you're going to talk about. So lately, there's been a lot of reflecting, uh, and actually, really over the past six months, because I stay pretty quiet. I'm a pretty quiet person because I don't like to stir things up. I don't like to make waves because listen, I'm a small guy. I'm a, you know, in the Air Force, doing my thing, make my side hustle, doing my business. And there's been a lot of words floating around lately that I don't think people really seem to understand uh, what they mean. So I just want to give uh, some gee whiz facts 
for the folks out there uh, listening uh, Thursday and or on this live right now. So there's four terms I just want to go through. One is original thought, creativity, maker, and oh, community. Okay. So original thought, I'm just going to define this. An original work is one not received from others, nor one copied from or based upon the work of others. It is a work created with a unique style and substance. So that particular term in itself says that you made it. It is your original thought. You were the person who came up all of the things that go into that work of, we'll call it art. Okay. Now for us, typically we don't have a lot of original thoughts because at the end of the day, a lot of things have been made already and we fall more into the lines of the definition of creative or creator. Relating to or involving the imagination or original ideas, weird, kind of comes from the first term I talked about, especially in the production of an artistic work. So a lot of us in the community, which I'll define shortly, we make things based on of, of other things. Clients come to us all the time with, hey, can you make this? Well, yeah, I can make that. I'll put my own spin on it because I guarantee that person that made that made it from someone else who made it from someone else, et cetera, et cetera. Maker. A person or thing that makes or produces something. That's all of us. All right, turn on that mini split, folks. It's getting hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> yay, yay! <laughs> but a maker, a person or... Josh, don't take off all your clothes. Please don't. For the love of Christ. Damn. <laughs> the bottom's already off. <laughs> For us all, please, baby. I started Let's that go way. get some more drinks. Manchester. Scotch, Scotch, Scotch. Manchester. <laughs> in my belly. I love Scotch. <laughs> But a person or thing that makes or produces something, that's what we all are. We are all makers. We all make and stuff for PG. Okay. We make stuff on a daily basis. That is what this community is all about. And a community, for those that don't know what that is, if you know, you know. A feeling or fellowship with others as a result of sharing common attitudes, interests, and goals. Hmm. I think the common interest amongst the um, the community, or at least to say the, the side of the community that actually believes in helping people, um, we believe in making the community stronger. And making the community stronger means sharing things without making everything proprietary. You know, I'll tell you what, my time's worth something. I've helped so many people with laser work, between aligning, knowing how to set focal lengths, all these things. I've helped people with a program I'm not very 100% familiar with, but learning every day. I help people with Vetric for free. Because I don't believe that uh, my time is so precious that it's so proprietary. Okay, I don't think 30 minutes of help, you know, dictates a $175 fee or anything like that because I'm just not that person. But on that, what are your guys' thoughts on that before uh, Matt hits in on this? What do you guys think of what we've laid down so far? Let's keep it short on our end so Matt can get to his piece. But uh, Nick, go ahead. So I don't think there's anything wrong with charging for your time at all, especially if you are putting it out there that you want to provide a service for someone or, you know, for a business or uh, whatever, whatever entity comes to you and says, Hey, can you teach me how to do this? Yeah, that should be, you should be able to charge for that. If you're good enough at it, the, the issue that comes into play is when you start gouging people, I get you have to make your, well, where I come from, it's called, it's called making your nut, but um, it's, it's, it's basically, making your, your daily sales if you have to, right? Um, cool, I get that. But at the end of the day, um, you do need to be cognizant of the fact that, look, it is it really worth it? Is it really worth skinning a cat? Because you can only do that one time. And then, you know, these customers that you have are going to think twice about coming back to you because it's going to cost them an arm and a leg for something. And plus, it's just not fair. It's not fair to the people who are genuinely interested in learning, and make, but to make it to price them out of the market. Um, what about you, Josh? Ooh, Etsy order. Oh, sorry. You guys, <laughs> <laughs> squirrel. You guys all hit uh, great points, and I'm not going to repeat it. But I joined Instagram because another woodworker pointed me in that direction, and I learned the word community maker you know, creativity and all these things on Instagram because of people like Nap, Nick and Matt and our patrons. I talk to our patrons, if not daily, at least weekly. The community is strong in the woodworking community on Instagram. But lately between the Odie's debacle, 
um, and other issues arising, it's been split. And it's sad to see Mm -hmm. because at one point we had so many people willing to help each other out. And now we're just, it seems like it's almost falling apart. And I'm hoping that we're going to rise from this as a better community and really dive deep into what we stand for. Because as far as I'm concerned, it's not just about one business, two businesses, about this podcast, about what I do, what Nick, Knapp, or Matt does. It's about our community and what we do together. We can make a lot of good for a lot of people. We just have to pull our head out. All right. That's basically what it comes down to. One thing I did like about this community when I joined is anyone that didn't belong, we removed. It was it was just like they just went away. You know, I don't wish that on anyone, but. If you dig your own grave, you dig your own grave. So to speak, hey, to speak to that, Josh, I think a lot of people find their own way out when they when they alienate the the community that they're trying to leech off of. When you are in Instagram or a social media market like we are, I don't care if you have one follower or fifty thousand followers or one hundred and fifty thousand followers. There is at least one person out there that sees your account and looks mm-hmm. up. To you. Absolutely. And that is your responsibility to sit there and actually make a good example. Be yourself one, because if you're not, we're going to find it out, comes out eventually. Yeah, it does. Okay. If you're not having fun, well, it's going to become work and you'll be miserable about that as well. You need to be a responsible adult, have fun while doing it. And just realize you have eyes on you all the time. That's what I expect from my phone makers. You know what? If that makes something I make, Usually we ask each other, but even if he does, it's more of a like, hey, dude, great job. You know, you got any, I got some pointers for you. We are here as a community, not for ourselves. And that's how it's always been and should continue. That is my speech. (laughs) That is my spiel. That is it. But it's not really about us here on the podcast. I really want to hear what Matt has to say. Yeah, you, you need to listen up for this one. So go ahead, man. So, man, I've been talking to the guys I've been talking about this whole situation for um, kind of feels like forever, but you know, basically all weekend um, and other incidents, you know, for, for a couple months now. And I'm, I'm cautious in what I'm about to say because, and I've struggled with this all day and I was going to make a public declaration um, I've since decided to at least put it on pause. Um, so what I'm going to say here, I'm, I'm going to keep here, uh, for the podcast and, you know, people choose to listen to it, then they choose to listen to it. And, you know, that's, that's great. And they can hear my voice behind it. Um, but before I get to that part, I would say, I cannot stand cancel culture, right? This, this cancel culture mentality, but when it is about something that is wrong, um, morally, like, I I think that there's people who are cancel culture because they don't agree with you. That's one thing, right? Uh, I, I don't, I don't get behind that. When there's something where someone is uh, not acting ethically, that's where I have a a problem, right? And and I'm all I'm all for let's go ahead and let's go ahead and call a spade a spade, right? Um, I'm I wrote a statement and and I was going to read the statement, um, you know, in my stories or something like that, but I I think I'm I'm just going to keep it here. Uh, so n- I think I'm just going to actually read the statement. If you guys are cool with that. Okay. So this is not an easy thing for me to talk about. Um, and some of you may think that it's unnecessary and, and, but I feel that it's important to me to talk about many may know that a while back I was part of the maker community project. In fact, that's where I first met you guys was I was on the podcast with the maker community project. Um, and that's when I first met most of you. I, I think I'd met Josh before. Um, but 
I even helped write the mission statement, which is to empower and equip makers, their families who have disabilities or experienced hardships. And it's a mission that I did and I still support the mission portion of that, uh, but just not through the Maker Community Project anymore. Um, in April, the team was all dismissed from the project without warning. And, um, you know, I feel like a nonprofit should follow a strict set of guidelines that, um, and that's something that I tried to implement when I was part of the team. Uh, but my, my requests were not honored um, to establish those guidelines. And so I had been feeling a burden to step out prior to all of that. But what happened in April was, um, you know, the, the entire team was, was not even notified that they were being dismissed. They were just dismissed without answer. So given those events and other personal differences, I've, uh, I've just sort, you know, I'm saying, look for me, and I'm not telling your listeners what to do. They they will make their own decision. Um, for me, I'm choosing to support other charitable contributions who have obtained a proper 5013C or C3 status. Um, I encourage everybody to make their own decision, donate their own time and resources uh, to a worthy cause. And I, I'm a champion of makers out there who work hard every day whether it's uh, you're a, a weekend warrior, you're a full-time maker, um, you know, or anything in between. And I, I want to support those who are able-bodied. Um, and I want to support those who have found themselves at a position where they can't work full-time. And so they're trying to make things to support their family. Right. Um, and, and that is what, the maker community project was about, and it may still be about that. Um, at least, you know, I, at least I hope it is right. I don't wish bad on anything on anybody. Um, in, in this situation, I don't feel like the maker community project will succeed given its current, um, status. Um, but, I do want to thank everybody who, and, and some of the people who I see in the chat right now um, on YouTube, you know, were supporters of the Maker Community Project. And I appreciate that. And you should know that that money did go to uh, support makers in need. Our, our last recipient, um, uh, yeah, Brady Bourne, he, um, fantastic guy, great family, tons of kids. Um, found himself uh, disabled and has been working to build his strength back up in his legs and things like that. But we were able to outfit a shop for him through that project. Um, and so I can get behind the cause and, and the support and all of that. Um, but given the events that happen in April and subsequently, um, you know, due to personal differences that I have uh, with, you know, this individual and the way that it's all being run. I hope that your listeners can um, pay it forward to the community. I think, um, you know, that's, that's a cause that there are other organizations um, that they can get behind. Um, you know, whether that's the John Katz Moses foundation um, you know, there are several veteran um organizations that, that they can contribute to, uh, toward, um, Gary Sinise. Um, so with all of that said, and <laughs> feels like a big downer, right. In this, in the podcast, so like go from a happy, go lucky to, to talking about, about Absolutely this. not, sir. Yeah. Absolutely but not. I think, you know, going forward, I think we need to start a new phrase. And so the new phrase is going to be for me, it's going to be hashtag compassion for community. Because I think changing the narrative 
and removing competition out of that hashtag. You know, it used to be uh, community over competition. There was there's a, a tremendous focus on the competition part that I think some people just didn't live up to. And so I want to be a person who's going to have compassion for the community and for those who love the community. And so thank you guys for letting me come on and, and kind of just vent it out, you know, not on my Instagram page uh, or anything like that. Um, And I want to thank you guys, you know, personally, I want to thank you because you all bought flags, you all bought hats and t-shirts and all the swag. And you guys have been the biggest supporters of that cause. And it's an insult to you what has happened. It's, It's an absolute insult. So I'll leave it with that. Insult is definitely uh, a good word 100%. for it, considering I can't even see that page on Instagram anymore. So I don't think it exists. Yeah, I don't know either. Thank you, Matt, for uh, sharing that with us, and we definitely appreciate you um, saying it on the podcast. It was definitely not a doubter and something that needed to be said, and I appreciate you stepping up and saying it. Uh, we're going to end this podcast a little differently than normal because I think what was just said needs to be reflected upon. Um, I think this last half of the podcast is something that the community needs to reflect upon. So with that, thank you, Matt, for joining us in Sundas Nation signing off for today.